Hey everybody, how's it going? So I just wanted to read a post that I had made on Reddit a while back because this is a point that I think needs to get more attention. And I think people who've been in this business for a really long time or who are veterans of consumer electronics repair would tend to agree with, uh, with, with my assessment here. So this post says, agreed, but for every Lewis Rossman, there are 10 third-party repair shops that do piss poor jobs, often do more damage than repair, void warranty you had, and cause more pain down the line. And uh, I said, the reason so many shops suck is because you have to be a lunatic to enter this business. You need precision hands, genius brain to make a moderate amount of money, dealing with customers who all want everything super cheap right now, who will call you two to three times a day asking for status updates on repairs that amount to brain surgery. All of the above would be acceptable if you weren't simultaneously fighting the manufacturer who went out of their way to ensure that parts, diagrams, and manuals weren't available for their products, so that you had to scavenge Romanian FTP servers and random eBay shops praying that you find what you need in time before the customer calls for the ninth time asking if it's done yet. The one saving grace is that feeling of joy looking a customer in the eye and saying, are these your wedding photos? After the Genius Bar said there's no amount of money that would bring them back. And enjoy the happy smile and tear coming down their eye as a reaction. Control Zing other people's life mistakes and watching them melt down in front of you is an amazing experience. Getting paid to do it when you were this close to being a high school dropout is just icing on the cake. But, to my point, you have to be insane to be in this industry by choice. Genuinely insane. I'm confident if things changed to where we weren't treated like degenerates by the manufacturers, more intelligence would pour into this industry. As it stands, many people who are capable and willing to do this work probably look at the hoops one must jump through to get anything done and think to themselves, screw that, I'm getting a real job. I know this to be true, because I have met these people, and I've worked with them. They moved on to different things. They wanted more stability in their lives than what could be provided in an industry where you live in constant fear that the next time you try to reorder what you need, whatever Skype vendor you use, it'll be all be gone. And this is a concern that I've had for a very long period of time. I live in that constant fear that the next generation of products would be fixable, but I won't be able to get a charge chip. Or that dude on Skype won't be able to scavenge me the USB-C controller that I used to be able to get for when the USB-C port dies. Or that that screen supplier won't be able to find me a screen for the new one. Because usually it's unavailable for the first year or two, and then they become available at a reasonable price, sometimes up to three years after the device has come out. I was not able to get screens for the A1466 MacBook Air that came out in 2010 until late 2013, three years. So I had to wonder, am I going to be able to fix this machine when at that point in time, most of the businesses net profit came from screen repairs. And a lot of people who are very smart, who are very good at their job, who have amazing hands, who are very, who are just good at this industry, they would be willing to put up with all the stuff you put up with to be in consumer electronics repair if there was a, even the smallest modicum of support. And what, I, what a lot of people say is if right to repair passes, you'll have all these people that shouldn't be in repair working in repair because it will be easier to enter the field. And I say the exact opposite is true. Once these types of bills pass, once this is then given the status of a what I, in my opinion, would then be a dignified industry because there is something that is undignified about having a dumpster dive for your parts and your manuals and your schematics and your, um, and your chipsets and have to wonder if what you got was actually real. Once there is, once this industry becomes more dignified, I believe that more people who are successful and intelligent will go into this field. Right now, in many ways, y yeah, you do have parts of this field where you're just scraping the bottom of the barrel. But why do you believe that's the case? I believe that's the case because you genuinely do have to be out of your mind to want to do this for a living when there are other jobs out there where you have the support of the company whose products you're servicing. You have the support of management. You have the support of the people around you, where they're not actively trying to sabotage you with each generation of new product. And if that's the case, I think you're going to see a lot of talented people enter this field that otherwise wouldn't have. There are people that are probably thinking, you know, screw that, I'll just get some low-level engineering job instead, or I don't have to worry about whether my ability to feed my family will be cut off if this Skype supply, random dude on Skype that I wire money to doesn't send me my stuff. So this is just something to think about because I always hear that idea that you'll have a lot of people enter the industry that shouldn't be there. And I think the exact opposite would occur. I think you'd have a renaissance of high quality technicians that were kept out of the field that would enter once it, this was a more dignified profession, once this was made a more stable profession. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something.